Hello everyone, this is Jennifer Escalera and I'm energy therapist at Kosha Wellness Center. And today I have with me Marsh Engel. Marsh is an award-winning entrepreneur, multi-published author, producer, internationally acclaimed inspirational speaker, women's success coach, career development consultant, and founder of One Million Amazing Women. And she's the originator of Amazing Women's Day. Thank you, Marsh, for being with us today. Thrilled to be here with you, Jennifer. Thrilled. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. So today we're going to be talking about how you apply meditation in your life. So you ready to get started? I am so ready. Yes. So Marsh, how long have you been meditating? Gosh, let's see. I'm going to say 30 years. Wow. 30 years. I'm going to say 30 years, yes, mm -hmm. because I've been doing the work that I do now for about 25 years, and I found early in my career, which was an investigation of how could I stop the striving and the pushing and the trying to make things happen, find a simpler, more ease-filled way of creating success and what I found early on in that investigation was meditation. Meditation to me is a way of stilling the mind. So you know how the mind, I, for me anyway, and for many of us, most of my clients, we can get spinning. Mm -hmm. And especially if we're highly creative, we can spin, spin, spin with lots of good ideas. Or sometimes I've heard people call the, it the bright, shiny object, you know, where something new comes along and all at once we get distracted and we're- Oh, yes. You know, we can't hold our focus on what we truly wish to create. And what I find in meditation is that the stillness allows us to really anchor in what it is that matters most to us, what we truly wish to create. And then all of our actions become much more empowered. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. And do you meditate daily? I meditate a lot. I've, I found early on that I had to, the traditional way of meditation where I had to really, you know, create a meditation studio, a space for it. I had to create the right sound, the right environment, the candles, all of that, like what we know traditional meditation to be. Mm -hmm. And then as I began to study meditation and explore, I learned that you can meditate while you're driving. You can meditate um, while you're walking. You can take meditations that are, are a walking uh, meditation. You, you know, in the Japanese culture, everything is meditation. All actions are meditation. Art is meditation. So I think getting past the typical definition of what meditation is and learning that a stilled mind can be brought to almost any occasion. And when we get a really mature and, and um, anchored which, uh, still mind, we're able to focus in and be present with the people that we wish to be present with. We could be present in a room filled with chaos. We could be present in a world that is filled with chaos, which is pretty much what we're experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. So that presence allows us then um, to bring more of who we are, the more of the essence of who we are to each of our actions and to our life. And I found that starting with traditional meditation was really powerful. I'm going to get a Kleenex overcoming a little bit of a cold here. Oh, yeah. Forgive me. Yeah. But I found that um, the traditional meditation to start with that allowed me to understand the uh, principles of meditation and how I could then begin to explore like meditating with mantras, which is a great way to meditate. If I'm sitting and waiting for a meeting or if I'm waiting to go on stage to speak and I want to stay very present and it's busy all around me or my mind wants to chatter with, uh, it usually wants to tell me that I'm not prepared or that you know there, I don't have anything to say. It says all kinds of crazy things to right. me. It starts to go out of control. I'll use a mantra and bring myself very present. So I think there's a lot of different ways we can meditate, but uh, my meditation started with traditional meditations and then continued to move out into where my uh, day could be filled with meditation. Beautiful. Yes. Very, that's so powerful for people to hear that message of just the transition of creating that foundation and then being able to experiment and use your own personality with the use of the tools of meditation and be creative even within your meditation practice. 
Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. So you shared a little bit with us about how, why you started meditation. Um, and you started meditation because you were branching into your career or was there some other reason of getting involved in meditation or what influenced you to start meditating? Yes, most definitely. I had experience where I was ran a, a promotional marketing agency, which was very busy for television film studios, lots of clients, lots of demand, lots of rushing, lots of the need to achieve. And through that experience, I wore my body out. Mm -hmm. And I came down with a diagnosis of lymphoma, a, a really serious, a serious illness. And I had to find a way, Jennifer, to stop the way things had been and create an entire new way of being in the world. Now, for me, that's the way I found meditation. And meditation, as I said, first became something that I sat with. It became... Um, Gosh, I meditated all the time, all different ways, but through the healing of my body, I was led to be in nature. And I found that meditation in nature was the most powerful for me and the most powerful for bringing in that feminine energy that only nature can really give us at that level of, of connection here in the physical. And I began to really integrate the power of being present in nature and felt my body begin to heal. Mm -hmm. So what brought me to meditation was a need to heal my body. Yeah. And also, I at the time, my mother had died. And a few months after that, during this healing process, my father had died. So within this 18 months, I had this, this really deep experience that was asking for healing. And I knew that the way traditional healing had been was not going to be the answer for me on this. I wanted to investigate and understand more of a feminine nature, more of a spiritual nature of healing my body and also being able to be present in the world more. And through that came the transition into a brand new career. So it wasn't, it wasn't so much, oh, I'm going to start a new career. I'm going to learn meditation. It was, there was this, I call them catalyst for action. There was this catalyst for the action which was uh, a period of my life, which, you know, we could call it the dark night of the soul that was uh, brought to me through the passing of my mom, through this diagnosis of this illness, through my dad dying, and then knowing that there was a new way, a new way of connecting that needed, that was really being called. And through it, I began to open up. Uh, you may have a question on this, but through the meditation, I began to open up my intuitive gifts mm -hmm. and I began to open up so much of my ability to see and so much of my ability to vision. And I say my ability, but I believe that when we can really still the mind, we all have that ability. And so there were so many gifts that came through the med meditation. Beautiful. I hope I answered your question. I think I went yeah. on. No, there. that was perfect. You answered it exactly, exactly. So that leads me to my other question of, is there a particular style of meditation that you go to or that you enjoy doing? And is that what um, helps you to meditate regularly? Yes, I, I um, have used a lot of different styles until I feel it's time for the next one. And your body will, will tell you, I believe. So there's not... Uh, pardon me for this, but I have a crazy cold happening, and I wanted to do this interview today. So I know, I, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for that. But I, um, I am doing a meditation right now that brings me through my chakras, mm -hmm. that opens me up and just does kind of a recapitulation or a, an exploration of my chakras and bringing light to each of the chakras and then infusing myself with higher clarity and I don't know if that's easy to explain as much as it is you know you probably take people through that process of understanding their energy centers but right now that is my favorite one and I say favorite because it's the most effective wow. it's like the clarity and when I start that meditation the level of peace that begins to come over me is uh, uh, awe inspired it's surprising to me it's surprising that through something that is truly simple, stopping myself, pausing, 
allowing myself that time with myself, opening up and allowing myself to go inward and explore and bring energy to myself through the higher dimensions. It's really, that is a process that can be done by any of us. We don't need special tools. We don't need special, uh, you know, training is wonderful and guides like yourself are wonderful for it, but it is something that we don't have to spend thousands of dollars to learn. We can basically pause, stop, value it, honor it, and, and take action in mm -hmm. aligning ourselves in that way. And it's made such a difference in, you know, tuning into my energy centers and allowing those centers to speak to me in a way that helps to give answers to the next steps in my career. And I always like to bring it back to a very practical outcome. So yes, it em empowers my body, you know, meditation in this way would empower our body, infuse it with energy. But you know what it also does is it gives great clarity. So we're not struggling so much. In a busy world, it could be so distracting about our next action steps or what do we really wish to create. And I know I encounter this all the time. I encounter it with myself, I encounter it with my clients. Mm -hmm. And to pause and notice it through this kind of meditation allows my work to become much more grounded. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you have so much wisdom. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is so awesome. And I love how you take us through the transition and just giving people that permission or just your personal experience of moving the traditional ways of meditation into a practical way of incorporating meditation into their lives or into your life. And yes. that's so right on what this course is trying to do or what I'm trying to do with people of just teaching people and educating people of how to bring in meditation easily and then using your intuition, finding that quiet space or that quiet um, stillness and or I, I, what did I call it? Um, pleasant stillness. I think that's what I've used in the past. I'm blanking now, but there's like a, this pleasant the stillness is beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. This pleasant stillness to be able to heal your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit. And I think that's the gateway into those higher consciousness, that gift of being able to access your true callings and your gifts that you can share with the world. So for you to be able to share that wisdom with us, I think also will give people more clarity that it's doable, that they can do this. It's so doable. And I think we were talking about before that it doesn't have to be a specific form. You can practice and you can experiment and you can play with until you find the one that really speaks to you. And, um, this isn't about perfection. Mm -hmm. Meditation is about being with oneself at a, the deepest level possible, I believe. And that deepening happens constantly. The more we meditate, the, uh, the deeper our connection becomes, I believe, feels to me. Yeah. And can you give us one example of how you actually do your meditation regularly? Like what's like, do you meditate in the morning, at night, or throughout the day? What, what is your kind of practice? Well, the meditation that I just spoke about, moving and running my chakras and the energy through my chakras, I do that at night. And it's amazing what happens at night. Because naturally, when I run energy through my energy centers, through my chakras, I will start to get glimpses of experiences that happen throughout the day. Mm. And sometimes those experiences throughout the day had something more to say to me, to teach me or to bring value to my life. And sometimes they were just there for me to pay gratitude to or just notice and, and honor and remember and, and just see how very guided my day has been. I say my day, but I believe all of our days. Mm -hmm. And so at night when I do my, um, running of, of energy meditation. Uh, it's a very different experience than in the morning when I run it. I run it in the morning as well. And in the morning when I run them, it's like there's a fresh energy there that is 
hopeful, that's inspired, that is sometimes it has new creative ideas. Many times it has creative answers. So maybe I have been carrying a question around with me and moving the energy through my chakras has allowed the answer to that to surface and speak to me. So I think that I do my meditation in that way in the morning and I also do it in the evening. And they're two different experiences, but the exact same process. So it's, you know, it just in saying that I'm remembering how very powerful our body is, how very powerful we are as creators, and that when we can partner with ourselves through meditation, we can allow our body to support us in uh, bringing forth more of who we are and more what we're going to really, I believe we came here to share, which is our love. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what I hear a lot of time from my clients about meditation, you know, particularly the beginners, um, they tell me that they can't focus or they don't know what it means to quiet their mind or, and, or they start being, um, they start judging themselves about they're not doing it right. You know, that self critic. And then the more seasoned meditators, they're, they're just not, regular or maybe they don't realize that they're doing it as regular as regular as they um, are so what's one tip that you can share with us about how to encourage those who are just beginning or maybe seasoned meditators of how to get into the groove of their daily meditation practice Okay, great. I'd love to answer that, but I'm going to first tell us a story, a very short story. Okay. But as you were speaking, it came to mind because we were thinking about stilling the mind. And I uh, took a sabbatical some years ago to Maui, Hawaii, and I was sitting on my favorite meditation beach there. And I was meditating with the ocean. It was a, you know, a magical, powerful place to be to meditate. But spirit came through and spoke to me and said, Marsh, your mind is a powerful tool. It wants to help you create. Give it something beautiful to create. Mm. And I thought at the time, you know, we have such a powerful tool through our meditation, through stilling our mind, and then giving it something powerful to create. And I think we forget that so many times that when we can allow ourselves to say, here's a beautiful image of an experience I'd like to bring to my life. How can I begin to meditate and focus on that? So maybe my recommendation, suggestion, idea would be if we could create a mantra around a beautiful idea that you'd like to infuse into the mind so that the mind can then become your partner in helping you create that. And it doesn't, this doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a master in anything. It could be something as simple as what would be a simple ask? Um, clarity or peace, stillness, even mm -hmm. creativity, joy. Joy would be a great one. Joy. I've had a period of time where I've been, my body's been healing, and I've been focused a lot on how can I bring more joy into my experience. So if we we just infuse the mind or use that mantra created a mantra is, you know i am filled with joy my life is surrounded and filled with people that bring joy to my life i i love the experience of joy i'm worthy of the experience of joy whatever we would like our mantra to be and we begin initially to build the muscle of that presence or that stillness by allowing ourselves to just focus on a mantra like that and infuse the mind in something that we'd love to give it to help us co-create, help us to create with. And in this case, it could be creativity or it could be clarity, it could be joy, it could be calmness or peace, beauty, whatever it is that you want to start with. And then let, let new ideas come to you constantly. They will. With meditation, you know, one thing I will say is that the stillness amplifies and with the amplifying of the stillness comes deeper trust of oneself mm -hmm. because you know that you, there's a deeper guidance that's happening within you and it feels really good. Ooh, girl, thank you so much. This is so good. <laughs> I love this. This is such, oh, this is very powerful. And I could just feel like I started to go in that tunnel with you. I'm like, okay, your divine wisdom that 
just knowledge that isn't always shared. It's like this behind the scenes about meditation, but there's so many good, good things that come out when you practice meditation. So much. It's, you know, it's, it's nearly one of those topics that you cannot describe. You really must practice it and let it speak to you in the way that it's intended to. Yes. Well, Marsh, I want to thank you so much for your time and sharing your wonderful wisdom. This is so powerful. And I know that the people who are either watching or listening to this are going to take so much from this wisdom from you. And then make sure that you guys who are listening or watching this, that you write those mantras down because you gave us like five, I think, different mantras we can use to start. So that's very, very powerful. And I want to thank everyone for watching today or listening to it. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Marsh.